Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at some more best of three content with this Demir reanimator deck. So we're not trying to reanimate the Dracoseth in this deck, instead we're all in on the Agent of Treachery plan, which of course is great to reanimate from the graveyard, and this battlefield can gain control of target permanent from the opponent, so we can even steal their lands if we want to, and that's often something we start with. And then future Agent of Treacheries can maybe steal the opponent's win conditions as well. And then if we happen to control three or more permanents we don't own, we also get to draw three cards at the beginning of our end step as a nice cherry on top. Then our other reanimation targets are Scholar of the Ages, which is a 7 mana 3-3. Three, three. When Scholar enters the battlefield, we can return up to two target instant and or sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand. So we can keep looping back reanimation spells, maybe some interaction. So Scholar is another great curve topper. And then we also have two copies of Villas, Broker of Blood. Not great in every matchup, for example, against the Fairy Time Raveler. It doesn't line up great as the opponent can just bounce it. But against some of the creature decks, like the mono red decks, the red green decks, then uh, Villas can be an excellent reanimation target as an 8 mana 8 8 flyer. And for single black and pay 2 life, we can give target creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn. And whenever we lose life, we also get to draw that many cards. So if we pay 2 life for the ability, we also get to draw 2 cards. So a great way to refuel our hand as well. So these are the various reanimation targets. How are we getting these creatures in play is a question. Well, we've got a few ways to do so. The first one is a Blood for Bones for Mana Sorcery that says as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and then we get to return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and return another creature card from our graveyard to our hand if we want to. So that's a great way to reanimate an Agent of Treachery on turn 4, for example, while maybe getting back the creature that we sacrificed. And then another neat thing about Blood for Bones is, imagine we already managed to get an Agent of Treachery in play. Even if the Agent is the only card in play and we have nothing in the graveyard, we can still cast Blood for Bones, sacrificing Agent of Treachery, and bring the same Agent of Treachery back with Blood for Bones from the graveyard to the battlefield, so we can re-trigger the Entrance Battlefield ability. So that's a great way to keep stealing stuff from the opponent. Then another way we have of reanimating our creatures is with Connive Concoct. Now, since we're not reanimating Dracoseth, we don't care about giving our creatures haste, so we don't need to play Bond of Revival, and instead we get to play with Connive Concoct, a nice split card that uh, we can always cast the Connive half if we need to, for mana to gain control of target creature with power 2 or less, but we're mostly interested in the Concoct half. 5 mana sorcery, we get to surveil 3, and then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So sometimes if you're in dire straits, you can always just cast Concoct without any creature in the graveyard, and hope to find one with the surveil 3, but but just the card selection that the Surveil 3 provides to set up our next play is quite valuable, and since we're mostly reanimating small creatures like Agent of Treachery and Scholar of the Ages, we don't really mind giving up on the haste from uh, Bond of Revival, even though sometimes a hasty Villas would be nice. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we mostly need cheap creatures to enable Blood for Bones, and some card manipulation to make sure that we can find the right pieces at the right time. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Murfolk Secret Keeper, great way to fill up our graveyard with the Venture Deeper half, and then still gives us access to an 0-4 blocker that can help protect our life total, but more importantly we don't mind sacrificing to a Blood for Bones. And then if Blood for Bones reanimates something expensive like Agent of Treachery, we can still decide to get back Murfolk Secret Keeper from our graveyard to our hand to maybe set up a second Blood for Bones that we could have in hand as a cheap one mana creature we can play and then sacrifice to another Blood for Bones. Then we also have two copies of a Radical Idea, two mana for an instant to draw card, and can also jumpstart it. We're mostly interested in the jumpstart here, as that's a way for us to discard a card from our hand to draw a card. And of course, if we have a hand that's stuck with all these expensive 7 and 8 mana creatures, we would like to get those in the graveyard, and the jumpstart from Radical Idea does exactly that. Then we also have the full playset of Thought Erasure, giving us a bit of interaction, making the opponent discard any card that we want that's not a land, and we also get to surveil one, so that can also potentially mill over an expensive creature to then reanimate in future turns. And we also have the full playset of Discovery Dispersal, we're mostly interested in the Discovery half, 2 mana for Surveil 2 and then draw a card, so the Surveil 2 quite valuable at filling the graveyard, 
and then giving us a lot of card selection, helping us find those reanimation spells if we already have the creatures in the graveyard, or maybe helping us find the creatures if we already have the reanimation spells. And every now and then you might be able to cast Dispersal to make the opponent bounce their most expensive permanent and discard a card as well. And then a very important piece of the puzzle here is Tomebound Lich, 3 mana for a 1-3 zombie wizard with Death Touch and Lifelink, and when a Lich enters a battlefield or deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So this helps us discard all these expensive cards if we have them stuck in our hand to then reanimate in future turns and provides a ton of card selection. A 1-3 Death Touch lifelink is also a pretty decent board presence as it can trade off for larger creatures or gain a bit of life against aggressive decks. So just an excellent card in the strategy. And then finally we have two copies of Embodiment of Agonies, which does a few different things for the deck. It's a 3 mana 0, zero flying Death Touch Demon, but the Embodiment of Agonies enters the battlefield with a number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on it for each different mana cost among non-land cards in our graveyard. And we've got a lot of different mana costs in this deck, especially considering we have all these different split cards that count as different mana costs. But uh, just overall, the embodiment can come down as a pretty sizable flying death touch creature, so that can potentially force some action from the opponent. But it's also still relatively cheap, where we don't mind sacrificing it to a blood for bones if we don't have any other cheap creatures we want to sacrifice instead. So it is a decent role player, but it's also a card that we can easily board out in sideboarded games. And then the mana base, we've got 24 lands total, including two copies of Dismal Backwater as kind of a necessary evil to make sure we have enough blue and black sources, especially when it comes to sideboarded games, where we've got a bunch of double black cards we want to be able to cast. Then four Watery Graves, and then nine Swamps and nine Islands. Then, taking a look at the sideboard, we've got a bunch of different options, as the metagame is still pretty wide open here after all the bannings. So we've got two copies of Duress against combo and control decks to complement our Thought Erasures, two Aether Gust to deal with the red and green permanents. We've got one Legion's End, which can come in handy against smaller creatures, exiling them, especially if the opponent has multiples. Can be quite good against the Cauldron's Familiar if the opponent doesn't have a Witch's Oven to sacrifice them in response. And also against the Growth Chamber Guardian, maybe the Great Hench will make a comeback and then the the Legion's End can clean up a couple Guardians. So overall, a pretty versatile card, but could also potentially be replaced with a Tyrant's Scorn, which can deal with uh, three mana cost creatures. So if cards like Regisaur or Gruul Spellbreaker become more popular, I could easily see swapping it. And then we've got two copies of Noxious Grasp to deal with green or white creatures or planeswalkers, so quite versatile there as well. Two copies of the Elder Spell against Planeswalker heavy decks, especially Just Sky Fires of Invention. This can be quite good against, since Narset is not a card we want to be facing, as it prevents us from drawing cards off of our various uh, draw effects, especially Tomebound Lich not being a May ability, means we have to basically discard a card when the Lich enters the battlefield and there's a Narset in play. So we would rather deal with those Planeswalkers thanks to the Elder Spell. After sideboard, we do of course take out some of the cantrips against Narset decks, so we can mitigate that uh, drawback a little bit. Two copies of Mystical Dispute as a cheap counter spell against blue decks, so especially against uh, flash decks, which are tough matchups, but can also come in against combo and control decks like Fires of Invention or Reclamation. And then absent from the main deck, we have a bunch of sweepers in the sideboard against aggressive creature decks. Two copies of Cryo Carnarium can also come in handy against the various Midnight Reaper sacrifice decks. And then two copies of Ritual of Soot to potentially catch some larger three mana cost creatures as well. So as you can see, a pretty wide selection of sideboard cards, but I'm sure that as the format keeps developing, we'll start fine-tuning the sideboard even more, and uh, maybe some cards will become more important than others. So that's the deck for now. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And don't think we can keep a one-lander like this, sadly. All right, this is a bit more balanced. And what do I put on the bottom? We do have a Blood for Bones, so I kind of need the Embodiment as something to sacrifice, but maybe I can find something better with the Discovery in the meantime. Probably want to keep Villas as something to reanimate, although we'll need to find a way to discard it as well. So I could also see putting Villas on the bottom, in case we don't find a Lich or a Radical idea, and then keep the Embodiment. Maybe that's better. Alright, we'll try this. It's definitely a deck with a lot of decisions, with all the surveil and the sequencing. So I think I can wait a turn on the Thought Erasure, just want to make sure I hit my land drops with Discovery here. 
Right, there's a land, probably don't need a second thought erasure. And as you can see, the embodiment is already starting to grow here. Opponent fetches a swamp, castle Lockthwain, and a cauldron familiar. Alright, so some sort of sacrifice deck. And a gutter bones. So this could be a good spot for a thought erasure. Midnight Reaper is going to be the selection here. But that Angras Rampage is potentially going to be an issue. As it's going to make it difficult to set up Blood for Bones. We do also have a Concoct in hand now, so I can potentially just uh, cast a 5 mana spell. Alright, so no additional pressure. Let's just uh, discover here. Make sure to leave up double blue in case we find a secret keeper, and Scholar is an excellent one to put in the graveyard. Yeah, another embodiment. So ideally I just draw lands and can reanimate Scholar, getting back some more instants and sorceries from the graveyard, otherwise I'll have to run one embodiment into this known Angras Rampage. So this is definitely a matchup for Crave the Cranarium. Looks good. Alright, let's concoct. And there's always a chance that we find something better to get back in the Surveil 3. Well, Villas is good, but it just dies to the Rampage. Still put it in the graveyard for now. And then I don't mind hitting my land drop so I can maybe cast both embodiments next turn. And Radical Idea can go. And we'll get back Scholar, which gets back our reanimation spell, and could go for Thought Erasure. Seems fine. Over Discovery. Don't really mind if the Scholar dies. It's gonna be a Murder Strider to kill it. Fair enough. Take three. Opponent might be playing around a sweeper, but they will commit another gutter bones and murder fighter. Alright, so opponents kind of all in at this point. So I can just cast two embodiments. One might die to a rampage, hopefully the other one survives to soak up some damage. Alternatively, I can just reanimate my scholar again. Could also reanimate Villas and get one activation out of it to, to kill a gutter bones. It still dies to the Rampage, I take 5, plus another 2 from the activation. I will draw a lot of cards, but I might be pretty far behind on board. So I think... I guess I can also Thought Erasure and play Embodiment, maybe that's better. Sure. Oof, they have 2 Rampages. That's gonna make it tough. Discovery Dispersal can go. I mean, I guess... I could just connive, steal the Murder Strider. And that still forces the Rampage, and then next turn I'll go double Embodiment. I'll take 5 down to 6. But then I can hope to stabilize. And it's more mana efficient this way. And I pretty much have to use the Rampage here, otherwise this Rider stops these Gutter Bones from attacking. And this Embodiment is getting pretty big. Alright, need my opponent not to add anything else to the board here, otherwise we might just be too far behind. Ooh, Witch's Oven. That's bad news. So I'll need to find an agent to steal the oven at some point. So right now... I mean, I guess now getting back Villas is okay, since if my opponent does drain me with the oven I get to draw a million cards but I would have to take two in order to play Embodiment and then Blood for Bones, and then I'll be just too far behind on life. So I think it's still just double Embodiment here. And then hope that uh, Cauldron's Familiar doesn't kill us before we get to maybe find an agent. 
And the nice thing about all our reanimation targets being in our colors is that if we just top deck an agent here, we can easily hard cast it. And Mayhem Devil is kind of the perfect top deck for my opponent here. So, pretty dead at this point. Familiar deals one, they can sacrifice it to the oven and deal a bunch more damage. All right, so it was a close game. The oven and the Mayhem Devil were some pretty good draws for my opponent. I needed to find an Agent of Treachery to reanimate instead of Villas. Would have lined up a little bit better here. This is definitely a matchup where Villas is not gonna shine. So I'm at four, but I'm virtually at one life here. Because my opponent can sack Familiar, that's one from Devil. Then sack the food, that's another one from Devil. Bring back Familiar, that's another drain from the Familiar down to one. And then if they untap, I'm dead. So I need to somehow get access to Agent of Treachery. I guess jumpstart Radical idea, hope to find a Conive Concoct. And then the Knife Concoct has to find me an agent. It's just a land. So yeah, I can Blood for Bones here. But there's nothing I can find that uh, saves me here. And I only have 12 damage, which isn't enough. So I think we're dead. I guess I won't show my opponent a Blood for Bones in case that uh, changes their play in the next game here. But uh, I could have cast it if I wanted to. So after sideboard... Cry of the Carnarium, one of our better cards. Legion's End seems good. And then we can take a look if we want to bring in something else. Maybe the Ritual of Soot is still fine. Gets rid of Mayhem Devil, Midnight Reaper. And they drew another Cauldron's Familiar as well. Not that they needed it. So, Double Cry, Legion's End... I think Ritual of Soot is probably still fine. And then Elder Spell, my opponent could easily have Chandra. But it is pretty narrow. Possible they go a little bit bigger after sideboards with access to Liliana, Dreadhorde General. But I don't know that for a fact. Ether Gust can bounce Mayhem Devil, but overall is a little bit narrow as well. This Pew doesn't seem like uh, something I want. So... I'm happy with the additional sweepers and the Legion's End. Villas can potentially come out. I think we kind of want to play the control role in the matchup, especially after sideboard. And uh, the Scholar plus all these sweepers is still fine, but Villas can easily be sacrificed to an Angras Rampage, as we saw in the previous game. So I don't think we need it, even though against the Cauldron's Familiar draining us, it can draw us a ton of cards. Could also see shaving the embodiments here as they don't line up great against Murderous Rider. No enter the battlefield ability. And then I need to make one more cut. We did go down on the reanimation targets, so I could shave like a Blood for Bones or a Knife Concoct, since we're less all-in on the reanimation plan. Given that my opponent's red-black, they usually have quite a bit of removal, so I don't mind shaving a Blood for Bones, as it might be more difficult to set up, whereas Knife Concoct, both halves are still quite valuable. So I think we'll try this. We'll be on the play. And yeah, this seems like an okay keep. Hopefully the Surveil can find us some goodies. Lead with Islands on the off chance that I draw a Secret Keeper and I want to use both halves of the Secret Keeper instead of Thought Erasure next turn. Opponent, of course, does bring in Duress, which is quite good in the matchup. Takes my Thought Erasure and we draw another Knife Concoct, so not the most uh, balanced opening hand anymore. Right, there's a secret keeper, so let's start milling. My opponent bringing in duress, of course, means they'll be a little bit less explosive out of the gates. So the matchup should slow down after sideboard, which uh, overall should favor us. But uh, it's still anyone's game, of course. And there's Chandra. It's another card we wanted to see. Say hi to my fiery friends. Mm, 
Another secret keeper. All right. Haven't found anything great yet, but there's an agent of treachery. So if I can draw a land next turn, we can potentially steal Chandra. And the blood for bones will do it as well. All right, Mayhem Devil plus Chandra is a pretty excellent combination as well. So we'll still take two damage from the Mayhem Devil triggers. But uh, Secret Keepers are safe. All right. So do we steal Devil or Chandra? Chandra, I mean, the minus from Chandra is still pretty reasonable as it can potentially let me get back some Thought Erasures from the Graveyard. But the Devil's probably still the scarier card here. And we'll keep a Blood for Bones on top, so I can potentially sacrifice Agents if it's still alive. So I'll steal the Devil, and then we can hope to just pressure Chandra with Mayhem Devil and Agent. The downside of keeping Chandra in play, of course, is that my opponent can get back the rest from the graveyard too. But, uh, of course, Mayhem Devil is also very good against the Sacrifice deck because of all their Sacrifice synergies. So I think this makes sense. And even if they take the Duress here, we still have another Connive Concoct and a Blood for Bones coming up. So this game's looking good, but... Who knows what my opponent uh, still has to work with. As we didn't get to take a look with our Thought Erasure. Alright, opponent makes me sacrifice a creature, Secret Keeper can go. And I can either finish off Chandra or the Butcher, let's just kill the Butcher. Alright, so, I've got a bunch of options. I can start by attacking, take out Chandra, can steal a land from my opponents. I can just cast a Blood for Bones, had a lot of options, opponent packs it in. All right, so any changes for game three? Like even our own duress could be a consideration if my opponent has a bunch of Chandras and their own interaction, but it doesn't take cards like Murder's Rider. And overall, cards like Witches Oven my opponent can potentially get in play on turn one. So I don't think we want duress. So I think I'm still happy with our setup. We'll run it back here. All right, pretty solid hands. Mill ourselves with a Secret Keeper, interact with a Thought Erasure, and then potentially improve our hand with a Lich. Although the rest is going to take Thought Erasure again. Usually Secret Keeper being a creature is a drawback, as we can get it back with Scholar of the Ages. But in this instance, it can be taken by the rest, so that's nice. There's a Familiar. And opponent stuck on one land, all right, so they kept a risky one. So what did we mill over? Cry of the Carnarium. So I guess we'll just play Secret Keeper for now as a blocker. Opponent doesn't know about the Blood for Bones or the Connive yet. But we don't have anything uh, in the graveyard worth reanimating. Although that's a good one, so now I could either Radical Idea or Tomebound Lich to get it in the graveyard. We'll go with the Lich. And there's land 4 for Blood for Bones, so we're in good shape. Opponent's still stuck on 1, so they can chump my Lich so I don't get to gain a life here, so I'm not even going to bother attacking. Let's just... Uh, Cast his Blood for Bones. Bring back Scholar of the Ages. Secret Keeper goes to hand, and then the Scholar triggers, getting back Blood for Bones once again, and probably the Thought Erasure. And we'll say go.
opponent does find land number two, but it could be too little too late. Now I don't have an agent of treachery to really steal this game by taking a land away. So I could mill myself with the secret keeper and then still blood for bones to try and set that up. I think that's the play. Alternatively, I could just surveil three and hope to get there. But this digs one card deeper. All right, did not get there. So now what's the plan? I can Thought Erasure and Discovery and set up for next turn. Seems fine. All right, so pretty stacked hand as we might expect. So I guess we'll take the Midnight Reaper, as that plus a Familiar can draw my opponent quite a few cards. And uh, if they draw Swamp they can cast it, whereas they need red mana specifically for the other cards. Don't need another land, I don't think. And let's discover. Alright, still looking for an Agent of Treachery. I think we bought them both. Another blood for bones. Don't think it's worth it to attack. Or is it? Yeah, like the damage doesn't matter and they would probably block the Lich. And then I would take one additional damage on the way back potentially. And if they draw red mana for like a butcher, I want to have my blockers back. So, opponents had a pretty slow start here to say the least. Although we haven't really been able to punish them with an Agent of Treachery. There's Mayhem Devil. So now things get uh, pretty messy. Could just go for the Thought Erasure, take away the second Mayhem Devil before they get that in play. So let's start there. Take Devil. And then do I keep the land? I guess I don't mind hitting my land drop with a Lich here. In case I just draw the Agent, I can potentially just cast it naturally with 7 lands. Sure. Don't need both Blood for Bones. And then I can also cast the Secret Keeper. Alright, so our opponent can essentially deal 3 damage per turn with Devil plus Familiar. And it's up to us to find an Agent of Treachery or some other removal to uh, break those synergies. But my opponent doesn't have a whole lot else going on. Dreadhorde Butcher, that's fine. I can always blood for bone sacking the scholar if I want to get back any instants or sorceries from the graveyards. Although crying doesn't do much. Secret keeper, alright, let's uh, try again. Still nothing. So 28 cards left. Now what? Do I just go for this Concoct, and then what's the fail case? I can get back... Huh, just a Secret Keeper, so it is pretty risky. I could just go for the Blood for Bones on Scholar. Getting back... Not a whole lot, couple Discoveries maybe. So I think I'm okay with the high risk uh, Concoct here. Alright, well, that's not what we were looking for. A Ritual of Soot cleans up all the creatures. So it's not the worst. Don't think Allegiance End does much anymore. Alright, it's a pretty disappointing concoct here. Now, do I even keep the Ritual of Soot? Yeah, probably. Alright, well, we went through half of our deck. But uh, if all the agents are on the bottom, of course, there's not much we can do. Should I be attacking with Stonebound Liches now, maybe? I guess we've got plenty of Secret Keepers on defense.
could have always decided to uh, attack first with the Liches to get a few extra draw steps on the off chance that uh, my opponent doesn't block them. So we're down to eight. Another Butcher. So I can Ritual of Soot here to slow down the opponent's clock, but definitely want to attack first with the Liches if that's what we're gonna do. So let's start there. Opponent still chumping with the Butcher. Do get to gain one life at least. So that dies, Butcher deals one, down to five, and yeah, sadly I think I'm forced to cast a Ritual here, even though it doesn't look uh, pretty. And play the Secret Keeper as an extra blocker. And sacrifice fodder for the Rampage, potentially. Land four for my opponents. Secret Keeper's gone. And Scholar's gone. Alright. Land 7, so now if we top deck agents we can cast them at least. Opponent doesn't have any food for the Witch's Oven, so for the time being the Familiar's in the Graveyard. So I could jumpstart this radical idea discarding Blood for Bones. And given that I don't have any creature, I guess that's fine. If I were to top deck Agent, of course, Blood for Bones is pretty good. But that's not the case yet, so... I think I'm down. And do this now in case we find something cheaper we want to play. Alright, there's the Agent. Can be the rest. Don't know if my opponent has any other discard. And then next turn the Agent could steal the Witch's Oven. That seems fine to me. So it took us a while to get there, but we finally found an agent. Don't have much else going on, sadly. But at the very least, the uh, oven means I can potentially gain a bit of life. So sacrifice a creature, we'll sacrifice it ourselves. And Chandra, oof. Not what we wanted to see here. Down to three. And can I have concoct? Alright, so now we can steal Chandra. Could also get back the Scholar of the Ages, but I won't have enough mana to do anything else meaningful. So I think I'm just gonna go for Agent here. And then can still sacrifice the food. And we'll keep another can I have concoct on top to get back the Scholar, which can then keep looping back our Blood for Bones with Agents. Anything I want to do with uh, Chandra other than making some Elementals. And then I can sacrifice an Elemental to the Witch's Oven too. And I could surveil one with the Thought Erasure, but of course we know the top cards, so instead we're just gonna sacrifice this, make a food, and then I guess I'll just do this now. Alright, so now we're starting to use the opponent's cards and synergies against them. I'm one permanent away from drawing three cards with the Agent of Treachery, which at this point we have to be careful that we don't deck ourselves. So I might decide against that. So let's take a look with Thought Erasure. Claim the Firstborn, could have been scary. Discovery Dispersal isn't bad just for the Dispersal half here. Probably still fine to put that in the graveyard. So just need to make sure I can end the game in a timely manner. But with Chandra that should be manageable. Put those in the graveyard, I guess. And 
get back Scholar, which gets back... I guess I'll go with one Blood for Bones, one Knife Concocts. And give us more options. Hit for four. So I have 14 cards remaining. There's still three agents hiding in those 14 cards. But uh, I don't think I want to play another agent here, otherwise I'm gonna draw six cards per turn. Of course I can always sacrifice my agents to the Witch's Oven as well. But there's nothing worth stealing at the moment, so... Yeah, let's just uh, make some elementals. Is there anything else I want to do? Could get back to Unbound Lich, but this also increases the risk that we deck ourselves, as it's not a May ability to draw a card. So let's just send with everyone. And we've got a two-turn clock here, so don't really feel the need to do anything. Let's just uh, sacrifice some food tokens end of turn. And yeah, my opponent has seen enough. All right, so opponent had a slow start in game three here. We weren't able to find an agent in the first half of our deck, but once we found our agent, we were able to turn it around. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And this hand seems fine. Radical idea can get one of these expensive creatures out of my hand, so all we're looking for is a reanimation spell. Let's see what we're up against. Hallowed Fountain tapped. So we'll cast a Discovery before the Radical Idea, or do we? Because I guess I want to jumpstart this next turn, but I won't have a creature in play for a turn for Blood for Bones regardless, so I might as well wait, cast this turn 3, turn 4, and then turn 5 potentially, could I have Concoct, and maybe this Discovery can find me something useful in the meantime. Like a Tombound Lich is pretty good. And then I don't mind drawing a land afterwards. Since we do need to keep hitting our land drops, I suppose I could do it in this order, in case my opponent has a Thought Erasure. So we'll draw the islands and then next turn draw the Lich. Of course, there's a small chance my opponent can manipulate my library in some way and we don't draw the Lich. But Thought Erasure is probably still the most likely. Guild Globe, so my opponent's probably on the Asper Dance of the Man's Doom Foretold deck. So which creature is most important in this matchup? Might still be the Agent of Treachery. And there's Conive Concocts. Scholar of the Ages is also pretty good. Don't think Villas is uh, what we want. Let's go with Agent. If the Lich is still around and we top deck Blood for Bones, we could get it back. But most likely we're setting up for a turn 5 Conive Concocts. The Fairy bouncing the Lich. Secret Keeper's not bad. I can mill myself and then still play the Lich. Although at this point we're just looking for additional reanimation spells in case they thought of sure the one I have in hand. And I might get to a point where I hard cast the Scholar of the Ages. Probably never gonna hard cast Villas, so we'll discard that one. Alright, so if they don't have a Thought Erasure, I can bring back Agent next turn. I've got it. This could be a Doom Foretold. Oath of Kaya instead, that's fine. And I'm mostly interested in just stealing my opponent's lands in this matchup. At least in game one. Hopefully no mystical disputes. Alright, so... Thought Erasure's fine. Although I don't mind hitting my land drops to just hard cast a scholar, as I said earlier. So I could keep the Thought Erasure. I think I'm just gonna bottom it, draw the land. And then next turn I can cast a big embodiment as well. Plus Radical Idea. And then bring back Agents. 
And then do I steal castle or the white source? They have a guild globe for fixing anyway, so I don't know how much it matters. I think castle's probably the way to go. And then I could actually just cast a Scholar of the Ages next turn if I want to. We'll see. That's more like it. And there's a Doom Foretold. That's fine. Alright, so... Casting Scholar seems acceptable. Get back... The Knife Concocts, and then do we go for a Thought Erasure or Discovery? If they Thought Erasure my reanimation spell, I guess I want to dig for another reanimation spell with Discovery as opposed to just messing with my opponent's hand. So let's take Discovery. And if I can keep my opponent off having a ton of lands, they can't cast a big Dance of the Mans, which is how they usually win the game. Let's try this. So Scholar of the Ages gets sacrificed. Merfolk Secret Keeper, so this turn I guess I just want to go Discovery plus uh, Concocts. Any reason to cast one over the other first? Don't think my opponent plays any main deck counter spells, but you never know. Well, let's just go with uh, Concoct here. And then Blood for Bones is not going to work because the agent is not going to stay in play for long, but it's still good alongside Secret Keeper. And then Thought Erasure, again fine, but I don't think I necessarily need it. So this seems okay. And then bring back Agent once again. And which land are we stealing? I guess maybe attack their blue mana. They've got three white sources. Don't think it matters too much here. Grab the Hallowed Fountain. I guess getting an extra black source for myself could be useful if I want to cast Embodiment plus Blood for Bones in the same turn. And then I guess I'll just cast a Radical Idea now. Of course, have to do it because of Teferi in my own turn. And then there's a chance I use Dispersal instead of Discovery. Murder Strider kills Agent, that's totally fine. And then next turn I could go Secret Keeper plus Blood for Bones, get back Agent once again. And keep attacking my opponent's mana. And we're also getting to the point where we can just hard cast or win conditions as well. So I can discard one Secret Keeper since we have another one waiting in exile here. So let's just play Secret Keeper. Blood for Bones. And then I guess I'll just... Put the agent on the battlefield and then put the scholar in hand, which can then get back more reanimation spells. Seems fine. Steal the watery grave. Alright, point's gonna go for Dance of Demands for two. Getting back Oath and Guild Globe. I can cast Embodiment, they just bounce it with the fairy. I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Can always cry with castle and upkeep if I want to. They could still cast a Thought Erasure with the Guild Globe, making blue mana. It's gonna be a Murder Strider. Take my draw step. Alright, so I have enough mana to cast color, get back Blood for Bones, cast Blood for Bones, which seems pretty good. So we'll get back Blood for Bones and Connive Concocts. Cast Blood for Bones. Getting back Agents. 
and Scholar goes to hands. And I guess I'll steal Castle Lockthwain. And I will start drawing three cards with Agents in my end step. So I have to make sure I can win the game in a timely fashion before I deck myself, but once we get to that point we'll be okay. So yeah, game one, if uh, all things go according to plan, we should be slightly favored. After sideboard it gets a lot more complicated, as my opponent gets to take out some of their bad removal spells for extra interaction. So I can also just hardcast my agent. Do I have any agents in the graveyard? I don't. can get back Villas, but that seems a little bit risky. I am at 12, so I do need to make sure I answer the board as well. Agent still stealing a land, and then cast embodiment, which can get bounced by Teferi. Maybe just play a Secret Keeper as well on defense. Definitely don't want to mill myself anymore. Maybe take a look with uh, Thought Erasure first. Alright, so a bunch of Kaya's Wraths and Teferi. Take Teferi. Another embodiment is fine. Given the Kaya's Wraths, I guess I don't need to play Secret Keeper. Since they're pretty much forced to wipe the board here anyway. And then discard to hand size. Secret Keeper can go. And uh, if Agent of Treachery becomes a problem, I can always just uh, sacrifice it to Blood for Bones without getting it back if I don't want to draw three cards per turn. Thought Erasure takes Agent, sure. Another Teferi. They don't really want to bounce my Agent. Right on but who knows, maybe they just want to try and beat down here. They can get in for 4. Although it seems unlikely that these are gonna go the distance. So 25 cards remaining still, that's plenty. Still want to steal their lands. So let's go with agents. Probably don't want to get double agent in play. Maybe one embodiment to force the wrath. Something like this. I guess it doesn't hurt to steal another land with blood for bones. Get back Agent, get back Agent. Just want to break my opponent's morale so they can see basically. So we can move on to the next game. Right, there's a Kaya's Wrath. That's fine. No, I am not making this up as I go. Take their last relevant spell. Phyllis, I guess, can close out the game. Probably don't want to get double agent going. Can get another embodiment to speed up the clock. Sure. Alright, so that should just about wrap up game one. Here goes nothing. Play a land and pass. Can always make a token end of turn as well. Alright, hopefully they don't draw any more removal. Shuffle 
pressure. So that can get them up to 11 life. They're still taking 11 exactly. All right, I guess my opponent wants to keep dragging out game one here. More power to them. 13 cards left, so I'm getting to the point where I need to kill my own agent so I don't deck. I guess I can also make a token. And I guess I can Dispersal, forcing my opponent to bounce something, but they can just bounce the Oath of Kaya back. I don't know. I guess I'll cast it. This card's a land. Just gonna take my turn, Blood for Bones, so we'll hit for three. On the one hand, I want to steal their land so they can't do anything. On the other hand, I don't want to keep Agent in play. But yeah, this game was over a lot of turns ago. Just got to make sure we don't mess up, basically. And get an extra embodiment out there. Alright, hopefully that's enough. No, not Rakaia's Wrath. Could have stolen an extra land to potentially not let them cast it, but they could have easily had another land drop. That's fine. Right, so we'll hit for one. Play a Villas, I guess. Although then they can Oath of Kaya me to draw three cards, which could be bad. Let's just get back some uh, embodiments, I guess. Keep all of those on top. Alright, please die, opponents. Sure. Alright, so... As I've said, the game ended a while ago, but my opponent elected to drag it out. So, after sideboard, my opponent can pick up something like the Kaya Planeswalker, which can mess with my graveyard, maybe Ashiok. So those are scary cards. So um, I can bring in the Elder Spell to deal with both of those, as well as Teferi. Uh, the rest is great, Dispute seems fine. Grasp deals with Teferi and Kaya, maybe? but it's pretty narrow still. What can I take out? Embodiment's not great, lines up pretty poorly against the fairy. Villas, kind of the same, but I do like Agent and Scholar. There's always a chance my opponent has like a uh, weird sideboard card, like uh, the one that exiles all four copies of one specific card, and then I guess they could name Agent, and I might struggle to close out the game, but I still have Liches and... Uh, Scholar can always mill my opponent with Secret Keepers, so I think we'll be fine. So I need to make two more cuts. There's a chance my opponent plays Narset, in which case Discovery is pretty bad, so I could see shaving two copies there. But we haven't seen any in game one, so yeah, let's give this a try. Alright, pretty decent hands with... Uh, a decent mix of uh, interaction, enablers, payoff cards. Don't have a way of getting the agent in the graveyard at the moment. So hopefully the secret keeper can mill over some good cards here. And I could the rest turn one. Does mean that the backwater comes into play tapped and I don't get to mill with the secret keeper right away. But it can potentially take away a thought erasure from my opponents. So I think I do want to rest right now. And there's a thought erasure, bunch of eggs and doom foretold. Probably still take the Thought Erasure here. Don't care too much about the Doom Foretold. So now that we picked up double Knife Concoct, I just want to keep hitting my land drops. Alright, they drew a Thought Erasure in the meantime. So yeah, that could take the Secret Keeper. But then we still have all the reanimation spells, so we've got a 
relatively resilient hand. Takes the blood for bones, taking away the potentially most explosive start. Right, radical idea is a way of getting agent in the graveyard, so we'll play land and pass. Playing Secret Keeper just to have it killed by Doom Foretold doesn't seem amazing. Another agent, more Secret Keepers. Although I'm not guaranteed to be able to cast Concoct next turn. I guess keep milling myself. Maybe mill over a radical idea, which I can jumpstart. Alright, so both decks are just setting up. Opponent with all these artifacts. They can sacrifice to Doom Foretold and later get back with Dance of Demands. We're filling the graveyards and setting up to reanimate Agent of Treachery, hopefully multiple times. And alright, my opponent has seen enough. I guess I'll take it. So we demoralized them in game one, and then uh, they gave up. Well, I wasn't guaranteed to get back Agent of Treachery if I don't draw land, but if I do, and my opponent was missing land drops, I can see how they would uh, concede in that position. Alright, so as you can see, the deck can have some pretty explosive draws with early Blood for Bones. It has a ton of recursion thanks to the Scholar getting back all those reanimation spells, so it's fine playing a longer game. It is vulnerable to aggressive decks, especially in game one. Something like Mono Reds is a pretty bad matchup, and uh, a counterspell heavy deck like Simic Flash is also pretty bad, although it does get a little bit better after sideboard as we get to bring in some more discard and counterspells of our own. So yeah, pretty fun deck to try out in standard here, especially now that we've got a brand new format after all the bannings, so feel free to give it a try. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.